Thank you, Alan. Good morning, everyone. 2013, is this the year that we finally move away from the sluggishness that we've experienced? We're four years removed from the Great Recession now, uh, and the question is, do we finally see light at the end of the tunnel? Well, the answer I give you this morning is a qualified maybe. Now, as the economist on the agenda today, I know you've invested great powers of pronostication in me, and I'll try to live up to the best I can, but to be honest with you, our profession has some of the greatest marketing in the world when it comes to uh, the ability to profess that we have the answers. Now, we can take a look at the tea leaves, which we will do this morning, uh, but I think each and every one of you, in a way, has the ability, based on your experience and insight, to read these tea leaves in a way that can work for you, whether they are showing positive news or sometimes challenging news. I think that's one of the greatest things about business people and everyone in upstate New York, is that we've been battle-tested for so long that we know how to do things through thick and thin. Now, I will say we are seeing some signs that 13 has some positive things working towards us, but unfortunately, there's still uncertainty to come, and uncertainty has been a buzzword, unfortunately, for too long, uh, especially the last few years, and man-made uncertainty to boot. Uh, I think we will have to watch very carefully what happens in Washington over the next several months in terms of the decisioning and leadership that we expect from our elected officials around very critical issues uh, that do have the ability to influence confidence and with confidence influence the business cycle that we will see in 2013. So uh, we won't editorialize this morning given the lack of time, but uh, stay tuned and stay positive, keep your fingers crossed. We're gonna take a look at the beginning of our presentation today at some of the macro economic uh, things that could influence 2013 uh, from the U.S. economy perspective. We still are part of that cycle, so let's continue to look at it, much as we did last year, to see where we stand, see some of the challenges and opportunities ahead, and then what does that mean for central New York in terms of our aspect of fitting into that overall economy that we are uh, influenced by. So without further ado, if we can get our first slide up. Let's continue the journey that we've been on in showing this uh, trend in terms of total output in the country. Uh, inflation adjusted, GDP, the value of all goods and services consumed, produced, however you want to define it in the country, uh, continued to grow in 2012. A year ago at this time when we were here, we were celebrating the fact that we had just poked our head above the waterline, getting back to the level of the previous peak. And over the course of the last year, we've continued to make progress. But progress is not the same as the growth that we're used to. Uh, in the 13 quarters since the end of the Great Recession in mid-2009, uh, we've only grown uh, above our potential twice. We're still struggling to get the engine of the economy moving. Uh, the last quarter that we just finished at the end of 2012 looks like it was a little better than originally anticipated, but not quite again uh, up to above that long-term potential of 3%. Uh, we're going to continue to see that throughout 13, in our opinion, but progress is progress, uh, and moving the needle is what we need to continue to do uh, throughout the year, and thus we did make that progress at the national level. The big challenge for the country, much as it was a year ago when we showed this same relationship, is that even though output has rebounded, we still have a lot of households in this country that are challenged in terms of their employment opportunity. We've made progress from about being six million below the previous employment peak prior to the recession to now again 3.7. So we're moving in the right direction. But frankly, to get back to level at the current rate of hiring nationally, it'll be the end of 2015 before we break that waterline. Again, a sobering thought at the national level when you consider that the paychecks earned by individuals across the country feed into consumer spending, which represents 70 percent of our economy. Uh, the more that we can do to stimulate employment, uh, building on those paychecks, the more we can get our economy moving into a stronger, more sustainable direction. 
Here again is the output of that collective paycheck of the country, if you will, consumer spending and the growth there. And, and sitting uh, right in front of me, folks that live and breathe this every day, uh, currently competing for those dollars, those discretionary spending dollars that American households have is a tough chore. You need to have something to capture that dollar. And, and the investments we've made here in central New York around that, again, are going to hold us in very good stead in the future. But you can see, again, the challenging nature of spending at the household level, a 2% roughly growth rate, is about the speed limit the economy is going to be faced with until we break free of this kind of uh, cautious spending pattern. Uh, it's not a coincidence that GDP growth at around 2% is tied into the same track that we're seeing here on consumer spending. So for the near term, we're likely to be range bound in this until we get again the, the collective paychecks of the country, the collective employment of the country moving forward. Good news, however, on that front, even with the relatively modest growth that we're seeing in employment and spending, the household balance sheets in the country continue to get better with each successive quarter. And this is again the trend we talked about a year ago when we were making progress in the deleveraging process uh, that had built up to just unsustainable levels prior to the housing bubble bursting. Uh, this is the, the debt service carrying cost that Americans have towards uh, the debt that they now have. We've shed significant amount of the debt over the course of the last several years, getting consumers uh, into a much better, much more sustainable pace than, uh, place than they've been, and that continues. Uh, the downside is the shedding of that debt takes away some of the, the ability of the Federal Reserve to stimulate the economy. Uh, the, the low interest rate environment that Ben Bernanke and company has engineered towards getting the horse to come to water has still not quite manifested itself in terms of what consumers are willing to do. Uh, slowly, we hope the ability and the willingness come together in 2013, uh, and we see some pickup in that ability of consumers to take advantage of these interest rates. And I'm not saying that as a banker, uh, even though we'd like to make a loan to all of you creditworthy people in the room today. Uh, but clearly, uh, t that's how monetary policy works. Uh, it, the ability to stimulate lending that pulls demand forward has been one of the thorns on our side uh, over the course of this recovery. Uh, hopefully this continuation of the improvement in balance sheets uh, will allow that to happen in 2013. Oops. Unfortunately, uh, the man-made impediment that I alluded to earlier uh, is still in front of us, and that's fiscal policy and the drag that is going to have in 2013 on some of the things that are actually turning around in the economy. Uh, housing, for example, being one of the better things that we're seeing and, and a missing element over the course of the last several years, uh, being a very positive and would have set us up for a stronger year had we not had to face some of the headwinds from uh, things in government policy around spending, around taxation, uh, around the fact that uh, we now have 2% less pay uh, based on the payroll tax increase that kicked in in the beginning of the year uh, that's going to act as a bit of a drag. So uh, for the positives that we're seeing, we still have one that will act as a major foot on the brake uh, for the short term and hopefully getting past that March 1st deadline around some of the decisionings that have to be made uh, around uh, spending at the federal level, around raising the debt limit at the federal level, uh, get us into a position towards the latter half of the year where we can uh, not have these kind of impediments. But for now, uh, this will be a drag. Bottom line for the country, more terrible twos. Twos in the sense of uh, the growth rate of the country looking in that two to two and a half percent range uh, this year, uh, frankly, based on some of the early year sluggishness from fiscal policy, we're expecting again around a two percent increase in GDP, which will get us further up the hill than we've been, uh, which is always a good thing, but clearly uh, more work ahead of us. And the expectation now is that 14 might be the year that we can finally say uh, the accelerator pedal is being pushed a bit harder. But uh, stay tuned. Uh, our forecasting power, as I alluded to up front, is subject to a lot of issues in this ever-changing world, and we'll have to see how we make out uh, with some of the things that are ahead of us 
service, and confidence being one that I think as we get into our presentation, a very important one, so a little bit of foreshadowing there. What's it all mean for us, though? We can look at macroeconomic trends till the cows come home, but really, most businesses want to focus on what does it mean for my region, where I do most of my business, where I live, uh, where I'm most familiar with the ability and have the influence to help make change. Uh, what does all of those trends mean? Well, let's take a look. The center state region continues to do a better job in terms of maintaining its employment base than the rest of the country. Again, a continuation of a trend we looked at a year ago when we were somewhat uh, making hay out of the fact that less boom, less bust was finally working to our advantage. It continued to work to our advantage in 2012. Uh, we maintain that employment base, which allows the spending to be a little more flexible than at the national level. But as you can see, as the year went on, uh, the gap between us and the rest of the country closed a bit. And that's something I think we have to, again, look at as we have an opportunity here to maximize an advantage that we have in this short-term to medium-term environment, to take advantage of our stability, to make good decisions, to make the things that will set us up for future growth while the rest of the country is still getting back up off the mat. Uh, how long can that last? Well, you can extrapolate from those trends, or you can look at another way of looking at the same pattern, job growth. Uh, our job growth has been lagging, and one of the flip sides of less boom, less bust is less bust, less boom. And we're seeing that so far in the past 12 months in terms of employment gains being relatively modest. Uh, frankly, at the uh, local level relative to the U.S. Uh, it's more in motion, but uh, it could certainly be accelerated. And as we got towards the latter part of the year, a little bit of uncertainty creeping into that hiring decision, keeping us, I think, uh, challenged looking out to 2013 in terms of the pace of growth in household uh, income and spending power across the region. The unemployment numbers frankly, have been a bit disappointing over the course of the year. And this is something across all of New York State. It's something all across the Mid-Atlantic. And so uh, when I show you these numbers today, take them with a bit of grain of salt. Uh, there's some discussion among economists, some discussion among the governors of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut that the Bureau of Labor Statistics that produces these numbers has a little bit of a problem in terms of capturing the ac accuracy of what's happening in our economy. Uh, these numbers will be revised in several months, and we may well see that our local unemployment number has moved lower than what we're seeing here. But taking it as face value, uh, the headwinds that we are entering the year with uh, are something that we're going to have to make good decisions around when it comes to capturing the spending power of local residents and some of the decisioning around the investments that we'll make in terms of getting employment uh, and people back to work from the basis of where we are uh, in terms of this particular dynamic. A couple questions present themselves as we look out to 13. Uh, the first one is the, our manufacturing base. Now, manufacturing has contracted, as we know, nationally, regionally. Uh, it has been hit relatively hard throughout the course of the Great Recession. Uh, it is not what it used to be in terms of its impact on our economy, but it is still very important to this country, very important to this region. And we need to look at how can we re-energize some of the manufacturing base that we have particularly those that have the opportunity to tap into uh, newer products, newer markets. I know the exporting section of your forecast at your table today is something that we should all look at very heavily in terms of this particular sector of our economy. How can we sell more to other parts of the world and bring those dollars right back to central New York? Uh, I think the planning around that is important. And also the, the, the fact taking a bit of risk among our manufacturers to look for those new markets and how can as policy uh, be made to uh, help that product. The other aspect of our economy, the non-industrial base, continues to look somewhat positive. Uh, so the drag that we see in terms of the employment growth, uh, we have one step forward in terms of some of the non-industrial sectors uh, offset by the drags in manufacturing and a couple that we'll see in a moment. 
But this is, again, the future, I think, for central New York, for upstate New York. Take advantage of some of the assets that we have uh, in our service sector, in our education sector, in our health care sector, uh, and others that we are able to leverage to compete nationally. Uh, we're still making progress here and sort of paralleling the rest of the country. Uh, we've recaptured our employment numbers here to where we were in 2007. So we have made progress and uh, I hope we can continue to build on that progress throughout 2013. Let's take a look at some of the sectors. As I mentioned, uh, inside the economy, there are aspects that are uh, growing much differently than each other. Uh, the factors that you see here, the solid growth in terms of the eds and meds, uh, the retail trade particularly, a nice 2,000 increase uh, based on what we heard by our previous speakers. Uh, the professional and business services sector making gains, but unfortunately, again, offset to some degree by the three sectors you see at the bottom, and that is going to be the nature of the beast for the foreseeable future. Uh, building our plans around that, uh, the realization and understanding of the different growth rates that these sectors are going to face in 2013 is part and parcel of our economic forecast. And I think this is something that will continue to manifest itself uh, throughout the nature of this year and beyond. So our forecast, we'll put our Swami hat on. Uh, we're looking at uh, in sports parlance and instant replay uh, and uh, the expectation is that this is not the year that we're going to pick up and start moving at a higher pace but we're going to continue to move forward and that's important and understanding how we can navigate in this environment after several years of doing it I think uh, gives us a good leg up to continue to make decisions to continue to move forward with the economy and uh, make the policy decisions that this organization, Center State, uh, working in conjunction with the regional planning councils, et cetera, are making good progress towards. A late addition to my slide just came out this morning. I wanted to leave you with a bit of good news, though, uh, in terms of confidence. Now, one of the missing ingredients over the last several years has been that confidence factor. Uh, people have been worried with good reason about their jobs, about their household balance sheets. Uh, businesses have been worried about their sales, etc. cetera. Uh, this consumer confidence number that came out just this morning from Siena College, uh, tracking quarter by quarter the confidence of all upstate metropolitan areas, had some very good news for central New York. Uh, the Syracuse area led all parts of the state in terms of its improved outlook for the future in the latest quarter. Uh, a 10 point gain from the third quarter to the fourth quarter. We're back to the level of confidence that we had prior to the Great Recession's onset. That is a fundamentally important aspect of any recovery. Uh, confidence breeds the ability to make decisions on spending, uh, moving forward, taking a bit of risk. Uh, for whatever reason, central New Yorkers are feeling more upbeat at this point heading into 2013, and that's a great way to start the year. Uh, we will hope that this continues. Uh, we're building on something that may get us to that stronger growth towards the end of the year should households continue to have a more favorable outlook about the future. Should businesses start to have a more favorable outlook towards the future because of this uptick in consumer confidence. So I think it's all something that we'll be hearing more about today uh, and take with us as we look forward to 2013 that Yes, I think that confidence is starting to come back, and, and that is what we need as Americans. We've been in our shell for too long, and sometimes that can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, getting out of our shell, moving forward, we'll see where we head in 2013, but this is a great way to start, and let's hope we can continue to see metrics like this in the preceding months throughout 2013 to get to a better place than we are today. So with that, I thank you very much for all coming out so early this morning, and I will pass the baton to our next speaker, uh, who will have some, uh, I think, really good news as well about the forecast. Thank you very much.